Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Gen AI Con. I'm Francesca Tabor, and I'm delighted to have with us here today Frank DiCarlo and Henrik de Goya. Um, they are co founders in My Damn Services. They have been helping marketing uh, departments with their digital asset management systems um, and streamlining um, their processes um, and, and dealing with various digital assets. Um, today, I'm really delighted to have them um, here to discuss how these marketing departments are adapting to AI and are going to enable brand consistency using AI um, and the challenges that they're going to have to face because of um, the amount of content that's being created through AI. I'll now hand it over to Frank and Henrik. Thanks so much, Frankie. Morning, everybody. And welcome to My Damn Services webinar, leveraging digital asset management for brand consistency and market readiness. As Frankie said, I'm um, joined co-founder of My Damn Services, Henrik de Geer. Morning, Henrik. Good afternoon, wherever we may be. Uh, we're going to speak uh, to you uh, about how digital asset management is revolutionizing the way we manage assets in the artificial, intel artificial intelligence era, ensuring brand consistency and accelerating market readiness. Now, before we get started, uh, Henrik, you want to just walk us through the agenda a little bit, let everybody know what we're going to be doing? Sure, absolutely. Thank you so much, Frank and Frankie. Uh, so today we're going to go through introductions very briefly, uh, the survey that uh, we'll be sharing shortly, as well as the rise of uh, AI-generated content, uh, accelerating time to market, uh, and integrating with AI and DAM, and some case studies, and some closing thoughts. Thank you. Yeah, let's um, let everybody see the survey. There's a couple of questions there. Yep. So if you go to bit.ly slash capital MDS branding, uh, there's a brief survey to gauge where you stand on things and if you'd like us to reach out uh, for further conversation beyond whether you're listening to this live or the recording itself. Thanks. Perfect. Um, so before we get started, uh, many are still uh, being introduced to digital asset management. And Rick and I have been working with it for over 20 years. Uh, but let's just give you a little overview on how it helps uh, a great deal of marketing and advertising departments. So digital asset management uh, is more than just a storage solution. It's the backbone of modern content strategy, enabling organizations to efficiently store, organize, and share digital content. In an age where content is king, DAM, digital asset management, ensures your assets are always at your fingertips ready to be leveraged for maximum impact. So we uh, blew up a, uh, a digital asset management um, window or user interface just to show you a little bit of what um, it uh, can look like. So you have your uh, your images, your visuals, and you can see exactly what it is uh, that's uh, uh, in your system based on search. So in this case, we might be searching sofas or furniture, uh, and then uh, those different uh, images and assets would come up accordingly. And then there's a series of different things that you can do with them to make it readily available for your teams, uh, for your vendors, or whoever it is that needs access to those assets. The idea is to have everything in, in uh, one central repository as a central source of truth to keep everything consistent. So just a uh, quick uh, note on repurpose, for example. So if I was looking at this um, chair and I needed that for a web page and it's uh, 300 DPI and that's a, uh, an EPS, I might want to have that as 75 DPI and as a JPEG for my web. And what I can do is go to that, go to that uh, uh, chair, click on it, repurpose it, not affecting the hero image or the uh, high res image. It'll spin a new um, version of it, and then you can download it or push it to somebody that needs it. And you can do that via link so that you're not clogging up anybody's email. If you want more information on the uh, on how digital asset management's work and how they can uh, uh, benefit you and your teams, obviously get in touch with us. But today we're going to talk over and not get so much involved in what a digital asset management uh, system is, but what exactly it can do to help you with organizing large sets of content. And as far as rising the the uh, the rise of AI generated content, we're recognizing that DAM can only help with this because 
humans create uh, content quite quickly, but machines will probably 100x that very, very quickly. And that is a challenge because how are you going to manage it? How, and more importantly, how are you going to search, find, use, reuse, and repurpose those assets when you need them across your organization? And that brings a whole host of different challenges, which we'll get into. Um, so it, it is a matter of maintaining consistency and quality uh, for your brand and your organization. Yeah, uh, AI is reshaping content creation today. It's offering just unparalleled um, speed and variety. It's going to be difficult, more and more difficult for people to keep up or keep uh, everything organized. Um, so today we're specifically speaking about how to ensure brand consistency because it's very important for any CMO or any, any advertising and marketing department. People are creating things more and more because they're so enamored with the tools and sometimes they're getting away from the brand consistency. So imagine every piece that uh, you create, regardless of the platform or purpose, singing the same brand tune. Um, you know, that's the magic of digital asset management. It's not just about storage. It's about ensuring your brand's voice and visual identity remain consistent, solidifying your marketing presence. In uh, accelerating time in the market in this fast-paced um, fast-paced market of today, speed is a game changer. Digital asset management streamlines your workflow from concept to market, slashing search times and fostering collaboration. It's like having a turbo button for your content strategy. So you're ensuring, um, you're uh, always ensuring at first to deliver value to your audience. As far as integration with them, uh, there's probably going to be a, several things that already exist today, like automated tagging and content recognition to find those assets that you really need very quickly, minimizing your time to market. But also there's the challenge uh, of understanding that if you already have a content library like a dam, why not leverage that information and understand that you can create new things faster based on your IP, your brand recognition. Uh, uh, recognition and your uh, brand specifically so to be on brand with the integration of, of DAM and AI so that A, it's keeping it brand consistent, it's flagging it if it's not, and you're building things, potentially speaking, on your already existing content. So the hub, the hub is basically, basically making your assets work harder for your brand. It's great today uh, how DAM uh, so easily integrates with so many different systems. Wasn't that way when you uh, you and I first started. Uh, let's um, go through a couple of case studies. Uh, let's look at uh, digital asset management has tr transformed a couple of industries, uh, a couple of our clients. So we're just going to go through three. Um, they're not just success stories. Um, they're you know blueprints for digital asset management excellence. Uh, these three really display how digital asset management can help companies. So this first one's a hospitality. The, the uh, chain showcases the transformational impact that DAM has had on their business. So by centralizing digital assets and leveraging artificial intelligence, they not only have achieved a cohesive visual and thematic presence across all their locations, but they've also streamlined their marketing efforts and elevated the guest experience worldwide. So uh, as far as being a unified brand, the uh, digital asset management system helped maintain consistent imaging across all their properties, enhancing brand recognition and customer loyalty. The marketing initiatives can now be deployed faster and more efficiently. Uh, the teams uh, can now access and repurpose content with ease. As I mentioned before, how easily, how easily you can repurpose content and not have to bog down your library and create more assets and confuse um, your libraries. The improved guest experience um, with quick access to update uh, the guest information and materials, overall guest experience was significantly enhanced. The, um, well, I'll let you talk about the next one, uh, Henrik. What's the next one? Education? So, uh, one of the higher education institutions uh, online uh, uh, distance learning programs. And they were struggling to organize and distribute their educational content. Um, not only the course material itself and their video lectures, but their supplemental resources. So uh, it was in different formats. Uh, the origins were different. Uh, the sources were different. 
and uh, it made it difficult for students and faculty to locate the specific resources uh, in a timely manner and update them as necessary. So what we did is uh, implemented a dam system for them uh, that organized all their educational content efficiently. Then uh, we uh, added some AI driven uh, tagging and uh, search capabilities to make those uh, easier to categorize and retrieve those assets when needed by any of those uh, end users. Um, so it made it a lot easier to, to consume and it was uh, secure uh, within the, 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 the needs of the uh, pedagogy and of course the, the, the school itself or the, the university itself. And only authorized users could, could access certain materials, including the answers to tests. So the outcome was basically the um, uh, improved resource accessibility. Um, so students and, and faculty could access all their materials when they needed to uh, for that learning experience, uh, streamline the content uh, management uh, as far as uh, streamlining those, that process of updating the course material and retrieving quickly and updates as well. And then, of course, uh, increase engagement, which improved academic performance as well. And the last one uh, we're going to briefly talk about today, the telecom company. Uh, this telecommunications provider faced all sorts of challenges in managing uh, an extensive portfolio of digital assets, uh, included marketing materials, technical documentation, customer support resources. Uh, it was endless. And the content was created by various teams across different regions, leading to inconsistencies and inefficiencies. So again, we help them uh, with brand consistency with a digital asset management system, ensuring that all their outgoing communications and marketing materials were spot on with their branding, regardless of the region or department originating them. Uh, we greatly accelerated time to market for them. Uh, they, uh, things could now be launched more swiftly as teams could more easily find and reuse existing assets. And the collaboration greatly improved. Uh, the digital asset management system facilitated better collaboration between teams, reducing duplicate work and improving content quality. So those are just a, a couple of examples in how digital asset management has really uh, helped in brand consistency and keeping everybody uh, on, on task. As far as implementing your, your dam, that you should consider um, a lot of different things. Uh, there are over 500 dam, dam systems and we don't represent any specific ones. So we will happily help you pick a, a dam system if you don't have one, optimize the one that you already have or select the next one if you need to switch out for, for a variety of reasons. We can even uh, do that due diligence for you if you need an outside party to do so to, to validate that you do need a, dam, a new dam system versus uh, just improvements to your existing one. And of course, the more importantly, uh, selecting it so it actually makes a difference in the organization, not only for brand consistency, but organization and uh, faster time to market with your content and your assets and your products or services that you happen to, to have uh, within your, your institutions. Um, but uh, we, we help in implement, we help uh, select, we help uh, uh, even with the AI integrations. Uh, so it's a matter of you picking your systems and uh, we can help you with all those things. Thank you so yeah. much. Um, I have a couple of questions for you if you've got five minutes. Please. Okay, Absolutely. Great. Um, so I'd love to know how important metadata is. Um, so you had, for example, all of those product images there. And when it comes to metadata, does that have to be structured data? Is that manually inputted? Or is it something that AI tools can now do with computer vision? So the short answer is, is it can help, uh, AI can help AI tagging, uh, but it's usually generalized. It's uh, not yet, uh, unless you train it to do so, it's not institutional knowledge for those assets. So it might be able to scour the internet and ga gather the things that might be on the internet about those products if it's already released. Um, but uh, institutional knowledge still needs to be applied if you want to be able to search on it um, uh, manually. Uh, typically, uh, unless again you're training the AI to do so, but that's a that's a a, a longer road to doing that for obvious reasons. Wonderful. Um, yeah, and the the metadata is super important uh, to your point, regardless of whether an AI or or a human applies it, because that is how you're going to be searching for things. We're not in the 1990s where we're going to be scrolling through 10,000 assets to find the one we want. 
or breaking down a folder structure, you know, 16 different ways to, to finding uh, the asset that you, you're really looking for. Because file names are, are very, very limiting. They usually mean something to some people that have created them and not to the general users that uh, are searching for it. So it's limited search, it's limited availability, uh, and metadata is going to be the crucial importance to tell you what it is, um, hopefully, and uh, what who, who can use it and what it can be used for and other, other things that are relevant to the searcher as well as the end user of, of that product or of that image or file for that matter. AI is catching up uh, as far as what it can um, uh, make available regarding search. You know, now you can get in there and uh, actually say, well, based on, uh, take this image, how many other images in here look like this? Or give me some more images that uh, are similar to this, or give me colors of red that are similar to this uh, sofa, as an example. So uh, AI, of course, is uh, you know, rapidly uh, improving, and that will do so as far in, in search as well. There are some industries that you can get away with uh, some AI search, but majority of them, it's still um, company jargon, uh, the way in which people search. This team uh, searches this way, this team searches that way. And that's where the consulting and the uh, finer uh, edge of uh, what uh, Henrik and I do in helping industries and businesses uh, actually fine tune their digital asset management system so that their uh, people can find what it is that they need. Because um, that's 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 what's important. If, it, if it's there, but people can't find it, it doesn't do anybody any good. Exactly. And that also comes down to taxonomy and other things that, that are sometimes manually and sometimes AI can help with it. Um, and even if you do find a very close image, like a prior example that we spoke about uh, earlier, Frankie, um, if you find an image that's very close to it, AI now can manipulate it to the, the exact type of asset. Like if uh, I'm not wearing the right shirt color for, for the image necessary, you can change my shirt color or things like that, or very, even, even much more uh, in-depth uh, details that you need for, for the right uh, image that you're searching for. Great. Um, so another question is if a marketing team has just hired a social media intern, uh, the social media intern knows how to use AI tools like ChatGBT and Midjourney, and they might be tempted to start using ChatGBT and Midjourney to create content. What would be the right process then um, for ensuring brand consistency? Would it be a matter of allowing the social media intern to create those assets and then import them into the dam and and who would be approving uh, the assets uh, that were created with AI or is it the other way around where uh, the social media manager should first go into the digital asset management system find the right assets but if they don't find the right assets how could they then um, use the existing assets to use generative AI to create kind of variations of what already exists so there, there's several ways to do that, and it really depends on the institution and how big they are for obvious reasons. So if the social media manager is, uh, or intern for that matter, is uh, in a very, very small department, they might not have many choices on that. But brand consistency is going to be super important. So the brand guidelines are going to be very important to, to dispel first and, and, and explain to, to those uh, individuals. Uh, so that establishing those guidelines, so they are remaining in brand consistency. Uh, it, regardless of who or what is creating uh, that content um, before it's released. And then whether, so you can have checks within your dam for brand consistency, whether it's the, the proper color, right? Is it XYZ color for, for your uh, brand? Is it, uh, uh, is your logo displayed in the correct uh, fashion and not stretched or et cetera, et cetera? Um, all, all the different things that, that your brand may actually care about, right? Um, which which we're, we're not really going to go into what brand consistency is because the, the audience probably knows what that is or will find out shortly. Um, but the, the, uh, if an intern is hired, you would hope that there's somebody to leverage and hopefully train that individual on what that process is, whether it is leveraging the dam first uh, and then creating something if it if it's if it's not found um, based on what it, what already exists uh, versus uh, advertising something or or marketing something that is completely new um, and that you would hope that it's still within brand consistency and and that it is um, on brand and uh, uh, reflects 
what the uh, organization wants to share. Um, but I think there should be some checks and balances um, in that. Frank? I was just going to say that, you know, uh, one of the great things about digital asset management systems is, well, most of them anyway, or a good, good portion of them, um, are so customizable. So the examples that you bring, Frankie, and there's so many others, um, that can be uh, customized for each client in their workflows. Um, there's uh, triggers and actions. So that uh, so when something's downloaded or when something's uploaded, uh, it goes to uh, the next person. So if it's a hot folder, uh, a trigger in action would bring it to the next stage where somebody's alerted that, um, you know, Mary has completed this. And then there's the online commenting and approval piece where all the right people are taking a look at it and nothing moves forward unless everybody approves it. Um, so it really depends, again, on the uh, workflows and the way in which those companies are working. And, you know, we never really change uh, work. Uh, we uh, make something new and inventive so that uh, it complements uh, the uh, workflows that people are, are, are already working with or familiar with so that uh, digital asset management systems, if they're not already aware of it, uh, don't come as a shock. It just becomes a part of their workflow. It's really not a technical upgrade. It's more of a uh, strategic move for companies. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, do you have any uh, sort of last thoughts for anyone within marketing today, how should they get started with AI? I think it's a matter of getting started with AI by trying it out. Uh, a lot of the tools are free uh, to see, uh, so you can kick the tires, for example, uh, just on your personal time, for example, and seeing uh, how useful and relevant it is uh, for what you're actually trying to do, whether it's text to text, text to image, text to video, um, uh, minimizing time to market is, is something that you'll realize um, uh, the the uh, one of the accelerants uh, that will propel this and how useful it is for what you're trying to do, whether it's creating copy or whatever it happens to be. Um, it, it is more and more relevant, and more and more useful in today's society, regardless of what you're trying to do with it. Uh, but try it out first and then... Um, a lot of organizations are uh, trying to figure out, and we can help with this as far as what it should be the guardrails for it. In like for for example, how, how to keep their brain consistent even if everybody's using said tools. Um, but uh, it, it's a matter of figuring out what the tools are, and we can help with that because there are literally over a thousand AI tools out there today, uh, beyond the ones that are very very popular. So it's a matter of what you want to do with it. Frank, any other thoughts? Uh, no, I think um, uh, a lot of people, unfortunately, this is probably another uh, webinar, Frankie, where uh, the thought process or for a majority of people is that um, AI is bad or it's going to, by contributing to it or starting to use it, it's going to be contributing to something negative. And uh, what uh, we're finding and what we're teaching our clients is uh, how AI can complement and again, streamline what they're doing. It's uh, such an incredible time saver and uh, a creative uh, outlet for uh, many people. Uh, so we've been helping a lot of people just uh, basics. Um, it's, it's amazing um, that we're uh, still at the bottom of the bell curve. There's so much uh, more uh, that's coming and uh, just keep up, try to keep up. And as Hendrick said, um, just start, just baby steps in the, well, well, thank you so much for your time today. Um, and uh, I'm sure people will get in touch with you at uh, mydamservices.com. So thank you. Thanks, Frankie. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.